That sounded like a doorbell was ringing. Hello, welcome to The Crafty Tinker. I'm Nicole, and this week I'm gonna be working on my sweater again while I'm talking. Um, I know I'm risking it after all the mistakes I've made in the past while talking, but generally when I'm talking to you, mistakes don't happen. So um, I hope everyone has had a good week. Thank you for being here. If you have subscribed to my channel, thank you very much. If you haven't yet and you'd like to, please do. Um, don't forget to click the bell for notifications. So this week has been um, interesting. I did end up tearing out the body part of my sweater that was wrong. Um, well, was the wrong color and I redid it and now I'm on to the next motif after that. I did not tear out the arm that was the different color. I left it because the colors really are similar. And uh, someone said to me this week when I went to Pines and Pearls on Thursday, um, you know, is, is it a mistake? Uh, what did she say? Is it a mistake that someone trotting by on a horse would notice? <laughs> if yes, tear it out. If no, what's, you know, what's the big deal? So I like that. So anyway, I left it um, because it's really not that noticeable. I just, the one in the body, I would have had to have used both the colors and they would have been right up against one another and that would have been very noticeable. I did forget to put the pockets in again. The thread for the afterthought pockets. I use waist yarn when I do afterthought heels in my socks. And so I wanted to do the same thing here. I always grab a yarn that's gonna be easy to pull out once I've secured the stitches on either side. Uh, so this is cotton. And then I always use a color that's very different to the colors that I'm using. That way I can see where the waste yarn is. You see it's not attached anywhere, so I'll be able to just pull that right out and knit my pocket into it. <laughs> and hair. I was meant to put it up at the top here, and instead I ended up putting it down towards the bottom of that motif. So I'll just have a little bit uh, more shallow pockets, but it'll be fine. At least they'll be there to hold a little something. And I think I only have two or three motifs to go before I can start on the ribbing. Pines and Pearls was really exciting this week. Um, for those of you who may not know, Pines and Pearls is an event that is sponsored by the Perfect Blend Yarn and Tea Shop in Saugerties, New York and it's held at the Dutch Ale House. Um, they very nicely put off a little uh, side of their dining room for us once a month and their food is delicious. I'm pretty sure I've talked about that before. They use mostly, if not all, local ingredients um, and we are in the height of tomato season so I did order a BLT when I was there. Oh, and I had to get their garlic Parmesan frites and they were delicious. Always, I'll always get those. So, um, oh, so it was exciting because they were shooting a short film there uh, this time. There were two young men and uh, some of their actresses, their, well, actresses, I think they had one actress and an actor. I don't know who all the other people were, but they set up in one booth um, in the restaurant. 
so that was fun. They did come by and ask us, you know, if we could be quiet and everyone in the restaurant while they were filming. So, you know, we'd hear quiet on the set and then we'd have to just talk, you know, very low. Um, it was, it was only about, I'd say they were only there about half an hour, but it was fun to see that. Last week I had a couple people say to me that they were impressed that I admitted that I made a mistake in my sweater. And um, I was a little surprised by that because I do. Whenever I make a mistake, I generally own up to it. Uh, I, I'm not perfect. And so, you know, when you're a new knitter, it can be a little intimidating seeing all these people who you think never make mistakes. And so that's, you know, why I wanted to talk about the mistakes I did make. And um, just to help other people, you know, maybe they would make the same mistake or maybe, I don't know, maybe I can help them. So the other thing that I've done is forgot to start decreasing my sleeves when I was supposed to. I was supposed to do many, many sleeve decreases. <laughs> so I'm trying to make up a little bit for them. Um, the pattern calls for like decreasing two stitches every so many rows and I forgot. So in the last pattern I did, I decreased 12 stitches because right now I'm, well, on this one it's a six stitch repeat but I was using 12 stitch repeats, so I figured I would eliminate an entire repeat by doing 12. So I did one decrease per repeat. Um, and then in the next one, I'll do another 12 until I get to around where I'm supposed to be. Because, you know, I thought about leaving them and then just doing a smaller cuff so that it would scrunch up and that it would be puffy. But since it's a cardigan, I wanna be able to wear turtlenecks because I love turtlenecks. I wanna be able to wear my turtlenecks or other shirts underneath and I don't wanna um, have to worry about the cuff on the sleeve of my shirt getting stuck, you know, being too tight or whatever with the cuff of my cardigan. So that's why I decided to do 12 decreases for now to make it come in line a little bit. So this week um, I wanted to talk to you about three different books. I got two books out of the library after I went to the spin-in over at uh, Hudson Valley Sheep and Wool Company. I, I actually was like Maybe spinning would be fun. Like, you know, get a drop spindle, learn how to spin. Maybe I'll take a lesson. Maybe I'll try to figure it out. I don't have a drop spindle. I don't have anything to spin right now. But I did get a book out of the library about um, natural dyeing and spinning. And this book is so old it's like falling apart so it must be well loved they don't even have the cover on it anymore someone had to hand write the title <laughs> onto the cover of the book um, spinning and dying the natural way and they put dying without the e like you know dying something so you can see maybe you can't um, I'll put a picture in. Someone squeezed the E into dying. And this book is by Ruth A. Castino. And it came out in 1974. So it is a pretty old book, but I thought it would be good. And I'm a collector of information. I love to research things, like, all the time. I'm always researching. So, when I'm, when I become interested in a, I want to say subject, but 
just when I become interested in something, I research it and research it and research it and try to learn everything about it that I can. So, um, I've always been like this and first it was baby wearing with my kids, found out all the information, then it was homeschooling, oh, which we are starting this week. So I did want to say that um, I'm going to start releasing my podcasts on either Saturday or Sunday. I haven't figured out which day is going to work best, but I will put up a little announcement on Instagram when I do post. Um, and if you're subscribed and get notifications, then you'll see when I upload a new video. But I'm pretty sure either Saturday or Sunday because we are starting school this week and so I'm not going to be able to record my podcasts during the week right now. The other book that I got is Natural Dyes and Home Dyeing by Rita J. Adrosco. So I'm interested to do this. Um, a few people on Instagram this week harvested goldenrod and it's really funny because we have goldenrod growing in our front yard and I never even knew what it was. I thought it was a weed and every year when they started to grow I would weed whack them down because they were growing behind our um, echinacea. So this year I have been awful with the weed whacking or strimming for those viewers who may be in the UK uh, because we ran out of twine and I haven't gone to the store to get any more yet quite frankly. So anyway we have some things growing that we have never had growing before and this is one of them and so because they posted on Instagram about harvesting their goldenrod I realized that that is actually what we have growing out front. Um, so yeah, I'll probably harvest some of that. And then also we had this other weed, I thought, growing that I always weed whacked, which it grows under a tree that we have in our front lawn. And then, don't you know, they're elderberries. And I've been weed whacking them down. But luckily we have some growing up in the back of our yard as well. So um, if I don't get to those this year, maybe next year. I do have three skeins of plain yarn that a friend gave me when she came out last year. She has a spinning wheel and has just, well, I guess maybe a couple of years ago she started to learn how to spin. And so she brought me out three skeins of yarn that she spun from fleeces that she washed and carded. But those will be what I'm gonna dye. And then I will probably do, well, I don't know what I'm gonna make with them yet, but um, I guess it depends on what color I dye them. I feel the sun on my forehead. Okay, I had to move because the sun came around and was shining on my forehead and I don't want to have a burnt forehead. So, um, I pre-ordered a Harry Potter book. It looks really cute. It's by Tannis Gray. And I found it because someone on Instagram posted that they have two patterns in it and they promoted it. And I cannot remember for the life of me what the lady's name is. I think it's Dana. She makes cute little sweaters for her dog and herself. And she was featured on 
Humans of Ravelry ones. So, um, but anyway, I was very excited. I've never heard of Tannis Gray, but apparently she's brought out several knitting books. I can't miss a Harry Potter knitting book. So, it's uh, coming out January 28th, 2020, which is just in time for my birthday in February. So I have pre-ordered a copy and I am very excited. I cannot wait to get it. Um, and also this week, I learned how to catch floats, long floats. Um, there were a couple of places here that I thought that the floats were a little long, but I figured on the body it wasn't so bad. Maybe in the, in the arms it's going to be a bit of a problem, like here. You can see uh, the blue floats there. They're pretty long. I think that one went probably about six or seven stitches. Mm, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It went nine stitches. So um, I could have done with catching it somewhere in the middle. But previously, I did not know the trick to catching floats. And Grace from Babel's Traveling Yarn Podcast posted a video on her Instagram account on an easy way to catch floats. And I was like, oh my gosh, that is so great. Because previously, well, when I first started knitting, to catch floats, I was taking the ball of yarn and moving it around, like twisting them. So I had to stop and put down my knitting and do that. And then when I was knitting, you know, small things like hats to catch the floats, I would just turn the object around to catch it. With a sweater that's this big, I couldn't do that, so I wasn't catching them at all. I was just trying not to use um, patterns that had too many long floats in them. So now with Grace's little tip, I don't have to worry about that anymore because it's pretty easy. I'll put a link to her video um, down below in the description, but I was very thankful that she posted it. It's part of the reason why I love YouTube and Instagram, Ravelry. Well, that's all I have for this week. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you are not subscribed but would like to be, please click this little icon down here and press the bell to get notifications. If you have any comments for me, please leave them down below. And anything that I talked about this week, I'll have a link in the description below so that you can click on it. Um, I hope everyone has a great week. Wish me luck in starting back our school routine and I will be back with you again in about a week and a half. So have a great day. Untangle the yarn. There we go. This chair is wet.